What's going on arcade nerds? Uh, recently I had to fix a board, an Omega Race board for my boss, because my boss picked up an Omega Race and he wanted an Omega Race working, and so I ended up taking the board home and fixing it. And so I put the I put the the working after I fixed it, I put the working board on Facebook to show people, hey look, I fixed an Omega Race board. Well, after that I got bombarded with people wanting me to fix it. Well, I, I, I asked. I asked on Facebook. Is, is it, does anybody else need their board fixed? Well, now I have tons and tons of boards to fix. Um, this one is from an arcade nerd. Um, anyways, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you in this video how to deal with the acid damage on these Omega Race boards. Uh, let me zoom in. I'm going to show you. You see this? See what happens is it you know it's, it's commonly called acid damage, but there's actually an alkaline, a base that is inside these batteries. The battery normally mounts right here, and it leaks over time and uh, corrodes all the uh, copper and whatever, all the metal on this board. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks uh, how I do it. Now you know there's different ways to neutralize the acid. Uh, some people use vinegar and so on. Uh, I actually use uh, a hydrochloric acid sometimes, or I'll use PCB etchant. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to use PCB etchant because it's 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 um, it's very strong. Now keep in mind when you use PCB etchant, this fluid is designed to etch PCBs. It's designed to eat copper, so you can't leave it on for too long. Okay, you, you know if you leave it on for for 20 minutes, there's no metal left. But I'm going to use the PCB etchant because it's it's very very strong. Okay. But first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to pull up everything. So, well, I just pulled right up. Oop. I'm going to pull up everything that's socketed. These are the 20, 2114 RAM chips. Wow, they're just pulling right up. All right, nothing in those sockets. Pull everything out. Set it aside. Everything that's in this area does have some bite to it. I'm still going to replace these sockets. Yeah, so that basically that's, that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to get this Omega Race. I don't know, you know what, I'm just going to show you how to clean it. And we're going to go in depth. I, well, you know, one thing that's important when you deal with acid damage is cleaning it. It needs to be clean, clean copper traces. If it's not, you, it's really hard and almost impossible to solder over corrosion. Okay, I'm going to pull these chips up for now. I'm going to set them somewhere so I can keep them in order. And you know what? I'm going to pull up these chips too. Get these in order. Maybe I'll do a second video where I actually show repairing it. Uh, but okay, so let me go find the etchant and I'll come back in a second. Okay, I found my PZB etchant. This is a uh, ferric chloride is the active ingredient in that. Um, now, one thing that's nice about okay, you know what? Let me talk about that. There's different things you can use. You can use um, muriatic acid, okay. Um, you can use the Works toilet bowl cleaner. Uh, you can use vinegar. Now, uh, if you're unsure of how long you should keep it on there, vinegar is probably the least, uh, it's probably the weakest solution you can use on that on this. So vinegar might be a safe bet, but if uh, if you want to want to do this quickly, something like this will do it nice and quick, okay. So one thing that was kind of nice about when about the sockets that Bally Midway used is you can actually pull them up, you know. And if if it's a good socket underneath, you can actually pull them up and reuse the plastic and set the plastic back down. You know what I mean? But I can tell already it's rotten. Okay, you see that? That is every one of these sockets is going to look like that inside. You see how that? I can't hold the camera steady. See how that's all so rotten? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up all these sockets. Look at that. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to go ahead and remove all these sockets, just like that. Now, keep in mind, this specific socket, you can do that too. Don't try to pull up other kinds of sockets by just yanking them. You can damage the board. But this type of socket will easily allow you to pull the plastic off without damaging any, any further traces. But look at that crap. That's bad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove all these sockets. Okay, all the plastic has been pulled off. And uh, by the way, I, I did pull out my 5101 NVRAM chip. Um, and I'm not worried about this yet uh, because it's, it's sort of clean in this area. And this doesn't even need to be in, in the socket at all for this game to run. So, you know, that's, that's not, not, not an, an issue yet. You know, it looks clean enough. But okay, now, this is my issue. I got all the, so all the plastics pulled off. And, you know, look at this crap. So, I'm going to get my... PCB etchant. You poke a little hole in this in the cap there. So I have this little hole. See that? It's going to pour it right on there. By the way, I should mention that it's probably best to do this. Let me zoom out. It's probably best to do this uh, outside or in a fumigated, you know, sort of environment. But uh, I have the door open right now to the kitchen. And so that's, that's my excuse. Because this actually, uh, you know, leaches out uh, gases that are bad for you. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. Have myself a paintbrush. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know what? Let me pull these two sockets. I should have pulled those earlier. Now I risk splattering acid all over my face. Okay. A little bit more on there. We're going to get this covered. I got this paintbrush here. I'm just going to work that acid in. Now this is this is doing two things right now. Right now, all that reaction of bubbles you've seen is actually it uh, neutralizing the alkal alkaline that's on here. We're putting acid on here to neutralize the battery alkaline. Okay, that that's one thing we're doing. The second thing we're doing is we're actually eating into the board. Okay. I'm going to use a toothbrush here. I'm going to scrub a little more. I'm going to get it real good in there. And part of the reason we're doing this is, number one, it's going to look nicer when we're done. Number two, it's going to look better when it's going to be easier to solder. I'm going to get all the legs here, these chips. I may or may not have to replace these, but just to make it look nice, I may replace them anyways. So I don't know. I mean, even if it works, for some reason it bothers me to see um, rusty legs on chips. Another common thing on these boards is there's uh, there's these two little diodes um, right here and right here and right here and right here that always fail. Move their uh, 1N4148 diodes. Let this etch into the metal a little bit. There's a fine line, guys. So you really don't want this. You can ruin the board real quick with this stuff. If you sit there and let it linger for too long. Okay, I'm going to rinse it off. And let's see uh, where we're at. I may, I may reapply it. I don't know yet. I have been sick for several days, man, and uh, my voice is still not, still not back. I'm going to rinse this off with some hot water.
Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to re rinse it, but just to show you. Still some acid damage there, but in general, I mean, jeez, that is a thousand times better. Look at all the clean, bare copper we're looking at. This would have taken you a long time if you used vinegar, okay? This is all bare, clean copper. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, you know what, I'll do, it on, I'll do it on camera, why not? I'm going to do a second application here. We're going to do it a little bit longer. Just remember... Remember, remember, like I say, you don't want to go nuts. I'm just going to let that sit there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it sit and I'm going to rinse it off. I'm going to clean up all this acid. By the way, I should probably mention that uh, if you do this on a stainless steel sink that you care about, it, it will etch the sink and you'll have to polish out the, etch it, the, the etches that it put on the sink. So since I don't give a damn about this sink, I don't care, but if you give a damn about your sink, you might want to care. What I'm doing right now is I'm just putting some baking soda on there. And uh, whether this uh, helps neutralize the rinsed off acid, I don't know, but I do like to use it. Whether this is all just in my head, I do like to put a little bit of baking soda on there. Because baking, baking soda has two purposes. Two purposes. Number one, it's actually an abrasive. Number two, it may neutralize any acid left over after my little shenanigans here. So, I don't know. But I, I, I do it. Maybe, maybe you could skip this if you want, but this is what I do. And then I just rinse off the baking soda. You know, the way I see it is, you, you may leave a small trace of a powerful acid under a chip, or you could may leave a small trace of a weak base under your chip. Which, which would you rather have? So, that's why I do the uh, baking soda thing. So now I'm going to rinse this off. <clears throat> By the way, whenever you're working with uh, strong acids like this, you probably should uh, keep some baking soda handy. Okay, so I'm just going to rinse this off. I'm going to rinse it off real good. Okay, I'll meet you back when I'm done rinsing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this off with a hair dryer, whatever, just to get it somewhat dry. Now keep in mind, when you wash boards, you should do the final rinse after after your final wash with rubbing alcohol or distilled water or something like that. That way, um, there it leaves no uh, contaminants behind or minerals behind that can conduct electricity. Now, distilled water itself, which is in rubbing alcohol. Uh, cannot conduct electricity because it has no minerals inside it. Uh, so, in other words, it's safe. L l let me let me tell you this: it's safe to wash boards, and you may get away with just washing with tap water and then then running it. That's fine, but I suggest you rinse with um, rubbing alcohol uh, or distilled water, just just so you don't leave any crap behind that can conduct electricity between different cake, you know, uh, points or whatever. So, what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to um, dry this off, and I'm going to pull every one of these pins out, and then I'm going to come back and show you, show you what I do next. Okay, so I removed all the sockets, removed all the pins, okay, and um, there is a spot that I pulled up a trace. Let me show you where I pulled up a trace, so if I can zoom into that. Can you see it? Between here and here, I'm going to have to put a jumper. I pulled up a trace. I, did, I didn't even realize it until I already did it. And, you know, th th that's another thing to keep in mind. When you, do, uh, when you do pull these things up, don't be forceful like I just did. You know, sometimes you can be a little rough, but you want to get these so they just pull right out. You know what I mean? Now, you can see, let me zoom out. This is still kind of, you know, kind of messed up. And, and there's still some corrosion left over, you know. Uh, what I'm going to do... First, I'm going to lightly hit it with some 220 sandpaper. Lightly. 
Okay. Just gonna lightly hit it just to knock off all the edges. I also I also moved some uh, or removed some uh, capacitors and things like that that are gonna be in the way of my sandpaper. I'm going to hit these all down here. here now a little bit. I want those pads to be nice and clean when I put the new parts in and solder it and everything. You kind of got to use your own judgment on this. You don't want to go nuts. If you go too crazy, you're going to end up removing traces. Okay, so what I did is I hit it with some sandpaper, some 220, and I'm going to hit it with some 320. And get a little bit of this paper right here, and got the board wet. I'm going to wet sand it with three with 320 now. Remember not to press too hard. Just want nice clean pads so I can connect stuff. You know what I mean? I'm going to go back to the 220 and get the area and the size. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and the last thing I'm going to do is hit it with some 600 wet sand. And I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done with that. Okay, I brought it up to 600 grit paper, and let me show you what it looks like. I rinsed it off, all that muck. And let's see if I can zoom in really good. There's a few little, uh, where am I at? Right here. That You know, these little things I got to fix. Here, 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 you know what I mean? This is not from me sanding, this is acid damage, or I should say battery alkaline or whatever. Now I did I did do this one right where am I at? Right here. See that? That one's my fault. I ripped it up. But these this is just, you know, rotten from the uh battery. Look at that. So now, now that these, these uh, leads are nice and clean, I can, these all look good, those look great, and the ones up here look great, so these can, let me zoom out, this and this can just be populated, done, but this is where you find all your little spots that are messed up, and even though, even though things look good, you should also get a meter and test every little thing, but let me show you one more trick, let me get the camera on the stand here and I'll show you something. I like to use a fiberglass pen, um, and I, I like to use it on all the through holes. When I say through holes, I'm talking about, zoom in, see this? Also, I like to reflow every through hole that has, that has come in contact with acid damage. But let me see if I can use this hand here, for example, this guy.
See if I could find one that's not as bad, so it's a little quicker for you to see. Actually, these look really bad right here. Where can I find it on a camera? Where am I? There we go. So you want to go around and you want to clean all these little things like that. Everywhere. And wherever there's a through hole that happened to come in contact with a battery fluid, you want to clean it. You want to clean every little contact, every through hole. You want to get your meter and test, test every through hole. Let's see what else I can find. I'm trying to do this looking in the camera. I'm messing myself up. But I actually have two of these. I use one uh, when I am um, when I'm doing wet stuff, and I do one when I'm doing dry stuff. I'm gonna rinse this out again, so I don't care if there's a little little you know if this gets wet. If this gets wet, it's hard to work with other things. But I kind of have one I use for wet stuff and one I use for dry stuff. I just use this base. This base is fiberglass fibers. It's basically um, a fine sandpaper, is what it is. But I just get all the little spots, and especially around the battery, like around. I'm too close. Let's zoom out. Like all the through holes around here, like this right here and this here closer you are to the battery, the more you need to check these through holes. And it's impossible to solder onto them until, unless you clean them first. Once they're cleaned, then you can re-solder them. And often the corrosion goes inside the hole. So um, I suggest, um, uh, you know, this, you know what, I'm going to zoom out. <clears throat> I suggest, let me get the camera. Let me grab my soldering iron and I'll show you something. Okay, this is my favorite kind of soldering iron, desoldering iron. It's to a pace, okay? Now, there's a whole unit that connects to this that you can use the foot pedal and it sucks the solder out, right? Well, when these through holes and whatever get, get corroded, they form like a layer of, I don't know if, it, if it's an oxide or what, and it kind of blocks it, so it blocks the hole so it will not let you suck through. So what I do is I get my this tube that normally connects to the base and I blow in this tube and from the bottom and it'll pop right out the top real easy but if you try to suck it in you know with, with a machine it won't suck in so I know it sounds crazy but uh, I'll blow and this will come out often if, if I feel the board isn't really isn't really that sound or if I'm or if I'm finding bad through hole connections I'll actually uh, blow it out put a wire inside resolder it snip it on both sides and you know that way you know you have a connection there you know but uh yeah that's you know what i don't know if they have, let's see what else i can figure out to show you guys here okay i'll show you this see this just a piece of wire okay now i stripped out some of the insulation and i'm going to get i'm going to do i'm going to show you this board working in another video but for now this video is just we're just going to talk about acid damage or battery damage Remember, it's really not acid, it's an alkaline. But I'm going to snip some of this off right here. See that? Now I have a little fine piece of wire. Do you see it? Well, this is how I fix things like things like this. I will actually put the wire inside the through hole. If I can put it in straight, we'll get it. Okay, inside the through hole. And I will solder it. Can you see that? The wire? And I will solder that wire to the trace nice and straight. You know, you might as well get things as neat as possible. It'll help you, it'll, you'll help yourself out later. Get it nice and straight, solder it to the solder it to the track, and go ahead and put in your socket and solder solder that one wire to the bottom of the pin. Or whatever. You know what I mean? But okay, uh, that's about it. Uh, tell me guys what you think. 
Do you guys have any, have any other methods to deal with acid damage? Or battery damage? I keep saying acid damage. Everyone calls it acid damage. It's not acid. Anyways, do you guys have any other ideas on things you could do to work on these? Or is it, did this help you in any way? Let me know. Leave a comment down at the bottom. Um, please subscribe. If you're watching my channel, if you got this far in the video, why haven't you subscribed? I, got, I do this stuff all the time. Anyways, have a good one.